Hey everybody. So, uh, firmware updates and other news. I just wanted to um, cover uh, firmware updates, mostly for the guys who are getting these to test, but, you know, I mean, there's not going to be much difference uh, from anybody else. Um, so, I'm going to cover two types of, um, of serial interface. Obviously, we're looking at a uh, uh, computer screen here. This is a, uh, a Surface tablet. And um, we've got these uh, kinds of adapters. These are typically a uh, prolific uh, adapter and I've got this um, wired up to, as I slide the camera over, to the 980. Now I'm going to show why these are not something that you typically want to use. So how do we know that it's any good? Well when I plug this in, and I've never plugged one into, the, in, into this um, tablet before, so it's going to find it and it's going to immediately have that triangle there okay so if we go into that thing and we look at it and it says this device cannot start a device which does not exist was specified that's because it's a counterfeit device now i already installed the older drivers so that i can work with the counterfeit Let's update driver don't do this okay so I go over here and I pick like that old, old version, okay? And, well, now it's happy. Well, that's because it's a counterfeit and they, did, they, they, they drivers detect that and it won't, simply just won't work. They didn't do an FTDI in brick customer devices, it just won't work. So, um, now that I have the old drivers on and it clearly is up and running now, if I go ahead and um, run the update program here, I should have no problem finding the radio. And it should tell me that I, this is on a COM4. It should tell me here that it's on COM4 when it finds it. So the radio is in the bootloader mode, hence the light. So it's going to find the radio. So now I'll hit there. Okay, we're going to find it. If I didn't manage to touch it, there we go. You see, uh, it found it. So it's happy now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tell it to go ahead and write the flash on the radio. So we hit write. We'll look at the radio. There's not going to be any indication on the radio that's happening. And that light will go out and the radio should boot up. Okay. Should. And it might and it might not. So as soon as it's done, because we don't get any kind of static, and, and, and it went out, but the radio didn't come on. Well, fancy that. So I turn it off, turn it on, nothing, dead. But I can go back into this. It's basically soft bricked. You'll say, well, gee, why did that happen? Well, it happened because of this cheap Prolo uh, ProLogic uh, knockoff, or prolific rather. That's why it happened. So. Let's see what happens when I use an authentic device to uh, update the firmware on this. So we'll close this. Um, we'll go back to that device manager and uh, we'll look at the list of devices in here. So see, we got our ports and we still have the prolific. I'll unplug the prolific and now we don't have any and I'll remove it from the radio. So now I'm going to plug in this authentic device. So we'll plug that in and it will just work it. It's a CH340 and it's an authentic one. So I will go ahead and plug this and connect this to the radio. So just bear with me while I'm connecting this serial cable up. So now that we have our authentic device. Uh, I'll go ahead and run this and we'll, where'd it go? We'll go ahead and look for the radio and now it's on COM3. Uh, found the radio, we'll hit right flash and watch the radio and we also have on this one we have indicators so we know it's writing something. 
Um, well, I think I just totally spiked it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Something is, oh, it's a little loose. Okay, it failed. It actually came up and failed right. So I'm going to do it again because I moved it and it wasn't quite all the way plugged in. So we will write it again and um, wait for it to do that. The lights are blinking away happily. Uh, on the Because I could see the, uh, and there you go, the radio boots up. It has everything to do with the quality and cheapness and error rates and all that wonderful stuff. You see, um, zoom this back out again. So these rather cheap uh, kinds of adapters, which I keep them around, they don't operate very well at high speed. Those, they're error prone. So I'm running 115K baud from you know this to the radio and this simply can't do it. Like it can run 115 cable. It just, it, it, the error rate's pretty high. It's in the several percent. So you get a failed write. Um, and it's not like it knows that. So, you know, when you try to run it, it obviously doesn't work. Now, um, you can, do it three and four or five times, and I would have to say it fails about 80% of the time. Now, if I ran, in, in, in all seriousness, if I ran one of these cheapo adapters down like 38K baud or something like that, or uh, 9K baud, you know, 9600, it will actually work virtually 100% of the time, but it also takes an eternity. So the simple answer is to just not buy cheap um, knockoff adapters like this. I mean, I have them because, well, I use them actually to cause write failures on purpose because they will fail. So it's a very con it's very nice to have these consistent fake knockoffs to do testing with. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but um, I, I try to keep what people in the field because people in the field they will skimp on it, and if they'll skimp on it, I want to test with it. So, um, anyways. That's why I have it. So, um, now that we've covered firmware updates, um, I'm going to have the pinouts and everything available uh, to, for review so that you know what, um, what the three lines are. Because there's um, uh, receive, transmit, and uh, in the ground, there's only three wires. Um, if you have an adapter like this one that has a, um, like this one does have a uh, RTS, a CTS, they're not connected. Uh, to anything. Neither is the um, the the output on that one that has 3.3 and 5 volts. By the way, it does have to be a 3.3 volt. You put 5 volts into this thing and you'll probably kill it. So that says, uh, I have, um, let's see, what else? Um, I have a macro lens fitted to the camera right now so I can um, show the uh, amplifier because this one seems to be a, um, a big question for people. So I'm going to go ahead and move this thing and tip it down onto the amplifier here and get a detailed shot of the connection to the amplifier. Just bear with me here. And um, so you can, whoa, fairly well zoom right into that thing with this macro lens. So the capacitor um, went from if I can get in here, it went from this pad right here. You can probably just barely see this pad to this pad, not to this pad. From here to here, at least on this board. I don't know about that. That I think this is a ground via, just like this might be. I think these are vias to ground. Um, but there's a capacitor that goes from this RF input pad over here, and that's at this diode right here and I believe this is the other one over here so you know they just put it in a sort of an odd place <laughs> don't ask me why they just didn't put it next to that one but they could have they just didn't um, so you should have like continuity from here to I believe here and um, that should be that's how you would know it's the right pad but you know, look at the picture you can see which pad it is on my board if you do not know, 
or you cannot determine it, then consult the schematic diagram. Find C3. That's what that uh, that designator is there. It's just a little covered with some flux. But that is C3. And uh, it's partially covered with a, uh, with a V as well. Um, that is the designator for C3. Um, consult the schematic. Uh, and if you can't figure it out, or maybe there's a change, because you know with these this thing it could change it, then uh, you know hit me up and you know I could probably help you figure it out. Um, I'm still using on my setup the two wires, um, and that's really because I just hadn't gotten around to doing a firmware change to um, to, to nix the need for the two wires. Um, in fact, what I just flashed to this radio is that update, so I need to test it. Um, but um, what should be, the only thing that should be necessary to use uh, an amplifier keying line in the future is um, simply to jump these two pads right here. And then just, you don't need the wires or the switches or anything like that, you just jump them. Because we're going to control the relay manually with that yellow wire, that's what that's doing. So. Um, to turn off the amplifier on the front panel, we just simply don't key the relay when you transmit. It, it just stays in bypass and you don't have to do anything. So we don't need to actually switch the power to the relay uh, keying circuit on the amplifier. We just simply don't tell it to, uh, you know, don't tell the relay to activate. Um, so we only need one wire for that. Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, you know, it's not a whole lot else uh, there. So, um, other things, I don't know, I guess I could make a quick walk through the menus here right quick to, to see. I can't recall what I have changed on this since the last time. Um, get something to prop this damn thing up. Even if it is upside down. All right, so, one more of these wonderful things. See if it will cooperate. There we go. So in the menu, um, obviously the same things as before. We got the beeps are all implemented. Um, the beeps, um, whoopsie. Um, so no. So when you push a button, uh, well, we don't have any speaker hooked up, so we won't hear the beep. Um, you know, that is an adjustable uh, level on that beep. There's a there's a pot on the board. I got a board over here to um, uh, to show. But uh, it doesn't beep when you change channels. But it beeps, um, you know, and it's not that loud because um, it's controlled. And that's the thing. I set that for the level that I wanted, you know, which is pretty low. I like the beep, but I don't like the beep where it's like, gonna blow your doors off you know um, that's controlled by a pot on the board so I figured the way to do if I did that then anybody could set whatever level they wanted um, and, and be done with it so um, that said um, what else is there oh I've implemented a uh, in the diagnostic menu uh, this is to open the radio up to um, you know, basically everything. So, you know, everything is like literally, whoopsie, I keep pushing the buttons. Like I can keep going and going and going until the PLL goes out of lock, you know, and then find the basically top end See, so that's where the PLL will, the highest that it will go without unlocking. Eh. Yeah, see, it's, that's it right there. So it's unlocked. So it would, in theory, keep going. Um, you know, it's just not going to work, but, you know, because it's unlocked. But we can do that going the other direction. Basically, uh, it removes the limits. Um, and you see 6, 9, 9, and then boop, that's it. <laughs> so, 
yeah. Anyway, so you get the idea on that option. Um, I mean, the colors, yeah. I think you get the idea on these things. Um, the other thing in here is a voltmeter. So there's the voltmeter. Um, not that great. Um, I need to tweak it a little bit. And I think that the um, issue with the voltmeter is actually the hardware variations of the radio. And I pulled out the original faceplates and I noticed that none of them read the same either. Uh, even though the code that is it's consistent, I'm sure their code is consistent as well. I think that there's some hardware variation in the radios themselves that make the um, uh, the voltmeters uh, differ. And in this case, it's actually quite off. I mean, it's off by nearly a volt. I have a 13.8 going in the radio, and it's telling me 13.04. It is way off. But if I take this faceplate and put it on another chassis. I'll get a different measurement. And I don't know why that is. I think it has to do with uh, the tolerances of the parts that Uniden used in the radio, but only use it as a guide. I probably should not have bothered to implement it in all honesty because I didn't realize that the variation was so much. Um, so yeah. Anyways, on to the board. So where does those amp wires hook up? How does that work? So I've got a board here, okay? This is a prototype, see, even with a bodge. So let's, while we got the macro lens attached to the camera, let's uh, zoom into this guy and, um, you know, take a look at some stuff. So this is the bodge. Um, you know, there's the pot that I was talking about down here. I got something to point with. Um, so here's a pot. This controls the um, the level of the beep. Uh, this bodge is to sort an issue with the Roger beeps. Um, you know, it's not going to be present on end user boards. It's only in these test boards. Um, it's already been fixed, uh, and that's you know basically like another bodge over here. You might see that there's a bodge here. Um, you know, it's just a, another transistor. Uh, resistor. Those are the only two bodges on this board. Otherwise, it's um, it's pretty good. So um, this is the serial interface. Uh, it's uh, ground receive transmit. I think I'm gonna have pinouts of that. All done. Anyway, so here's this other header here. Um, this top pin is the keying line. Um, you know, when you're looking at it from this orientation, this is the keying line. The two bottom pins are the normally open switch. And I think the second pin and the middle pin are the normally closed switch. So you wouldn't use this pin um, for anything unless it required it to be reversed. You would use the bottom two to control something that you wanted to turn on or off. So. This switch is it's, it's, it's this uh, relay here for these three pins. It's obviously isolated, um, but in the case of like controlling an amplifier, you actually don't need it. If you use the one wire for the keying circuit, then you don't need to connect anything to these three wires uh, or these three posts. And I recommend, of course, soldering it, um, being done with it. It's basically it. Um, so this one obviously hasn't been in a radio. So see, it's all. I haven't even put the damn buttons on it. Um, and the reason I haven't put the buttons on it is because I put this in the ultrasonic cleaner and the buttons don't, they're not tolerant to ultrasonic cleaning, they die. So I clean the board uh, in the ultrasonic cleaner and uh, put the buttons on last because like I said, they just don't survive. So that's basically it guys. So um, yeah. Thoughts, criticism, questions, um, and uh, oh, and one last thing before I, I wrap this particular uh, thing up. Um, you know, I've gotten a couple emails, you know, because somebody, a couple people have sent me emails. They wanted to come talk about the 980 on TeamSpeak. And then there's like, oh, there's nobody there. Well, the first video, the last video I did where I talked about this TeamSpeak information, um, 
about maybe an hour, an hour and a half after that video was um, posted, I had someone come onto the server and there were, oh, we had about, there was some guys and they were doing a game because, you know, we guys would come on and we'd play games and whatnot. And so there were some guys and they were running a uh, Lord of the Rings raid and um, they were using the TeamSpeak server and um, somebody, a couple guys came in and they were um, running rampant on the server going completely crazy and jumping in those guys' raids and cursing them and doing all that kind of stuff. So we pretty much made another TeamSpeak server for people who are going to play games or at least for the, for, for the guys who I tend to play with on occasion. So that's why nobody's on it anymore because anybody who was on it, we had got run off by a couple clowns. Now they've been banned, um, but um, you know, so only the guys that are going to come on are the radio guys, and those are you know here and there. I've seen a couple people pop in. Uh, yesterday, somebody popped in, talked to him for about an hour, and then they left. Um, but I generally am there, and if you don't, if I don't like see you or answer you because a lot of times sit in front of the computer and obviously working on the software for this thing here um, at least tidying up a few loose ends um, there's a poke feature you poke it and then you, you poke me and then you know it pops up a little box on my screen and then I can you know obviously uh, answer you because sometimes I just don't leave my headphones on sometimes I don't hear it um, and if I don't leave the headphones plugged into the computer, then when I go plug them in, it won't find that I can't talk. So I can hear, but then can't. You know, it's just an issue with just how it is. So that's the answer to that question as to what the deal is with TeamSpeak and why it's nobody's there. Yeah, because people got ran off. Anyway, guys, um, catch you next time. And, uh, you know, any questions about this, uh, you know, the whole thing from the guys who are, are getting these um one of them's already off. This one's going out very shortly as soon as I mount the buttons. Um, so, you know, uh, you know, like I said, for people, they're not going to get one with bodges. These are tests. So it's not for you guys, you know, who, who want them like for real. So, you know, which is uh, once I get the feedback from the test guys on these boards, you know, once I get them to give me feedback on these, these guys right here, um, the, and there's no additional debauchery required, then I send those off and I get the first 10 real ones. So, till next time, guys. Catch you later.